Legion, it's Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Total War Rome 2 in our Empire Divided Palmyra series, where Tetricus has just walked straight up to Zenobia's Chosen with a less than ideal force, and we are now prepared to ambush him. So let's go ahead and fight this battle on the battlefield and make him feel like a complete idiot. The Battle of Patavium, 282 AD. This is the leader of the Gallic Roman faction. Against one of the major generals. Not even one of my strongest, but definitely one of the more experienced generals and armies in the Palmyrian army. Royal God! Yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be fun. Alright, so we have heavy spear infantry, which is perfect because. Tetricus is using chariots. So what we're going to do here is have our general positioned here to um, give him a little bit of a hard time. We could also use elephants on both sides. Which is what we're going to do. And then he has Two swordsmen, spearmen, two more swordsmen, spearmen, archers, and a single war dog unit in the back. Which just makes me laugh. We are at your command. I am going to have archers on both sides, and for a moment I'll have them firing at will. Well, let's have them a little bit farther back. Can, can hardly see the yellow line here. Oh, it's because the yellow line is much closer to the red line on this side of things. Okay, that's why. That makes more sense. So with that being known, we definitely want to have the elephants a little bit closer to where they can charge in on Tetricus sooner. Alright, so the archers are going to fire from both directions. Their skirmish mode is going to remain on. And then we have several units of spearmen... He doesn't have any cavalry units except for the chariots. Jupiter gives us strength. So we're, we're actually going to position a couple units of spearmen in front of the general just to protect him. And then we're going to have the other spearmen over here. And we'll see which direction he goes, but we're going to try and sandwich the chariots as fast as we can. If I can use that terminology, that's what we're going to do. And of course we have some, some cavalry we can use too, so let's not forget about them. They'll be used to probably to tear up the archers most likely, but we have some melee units that need to charge in and get some business done as rapidly as possible. How about we position you two here? And same business here, we just want to have these guys in front of the archers to where if the archers do get charged, there will at least be a force that is protecting them. Oh god. Alright, so here's this. No, 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 no. I didn't want to do that. I wanted both of them selected. There we go. Okay, so we have some Palmarine Cataphracts and Legionary Cavalry here. So we've got very heavy shock cavalry. A couple of them. Now the shock cav probably need to hit Let's have the shock cap position behind these lines. And we'll have them charge in once the spearmen have charged in. So they're kind of going to be a second wave. But the main cavalry are a bit of a different story. And they are just going to come in and take out those archers. And war dogs. So they're going to ride in from the back and do as much damage as possible. Okay, we're set up. Start. Pause. Oh, there's actually additional archers, which I didn't see initially. That's... Kind of annoying. Don't know why the game would do that.
Now I could also use my elephants to take out the swordsmen here to make sure that my spearmen charging down don't have any competition. That could be another way to use the elephants to great effect. I'm going to do that. They might also get tangled up with the chariots, but that's fine. I, I, I just kind of need them to be generally taking on this whole area. Now the swordsmen I'm not going to give an order to just yet because I don't want them riding down. And then we'll wait for a moment on the shock calf. Excellent. Arrows flying straight into the area that I needed them to. And it looks like Tetricus is right in the middle there. So I can have Shock Cav charge in if I wanted to. Just want to make sure my archers are still firing on areas that are relatively clear of my troops, and they are. Okay, so let's see what abilities we have. I have several available to me. We have Into the Breach. We have Inspire, but I want to see what group abilities I have. And if I wait a little bit longer, we can use Rally to improve morale. We have Intimidate, which is... We can have Tetricus... Yeah, we can use Intimidate on Tetricus right now. Alright, so he no longer can use his abilities. And then we have War Cry, which is for single enemies. So I don't know that we can actually... We don't have the fear with this general, sadly. So we don't have the ability to do, do a mass disruption of his morale. Okay, so these guys are already getting torn up. Let's go ahead and reduce Tetricus's morale. Looks like Tetricus is almost dead. I'm going to go ahead and have my archers stop firing. They've done all the damage they can. I will keep them on skirmish mode in case they get charged, but now is the time to bring shock cavalry in to make sure that no mistakes happen. I'm going to have the shock cav hit. Let's see, what's the strongest unit in this area? Yeah, we're going to have them hit the uh, Gallic Spearmen here. Split these guys up a little bit. Have the general focus on the general. And then, did I give you an order? I did. So now what we can do is have the swordsmen come down. Well, that went incredibly well. So is this going to go incredibly well? All right, looks like Tetricus has been defeated. I'm not seeing any of his forces in the area. We have got his forces completely broken already. Wow. We destroyed him. Continue. That was embarrassing, Tetricus. All right, let's chase some guys down. We're going to try and hit the ones that are farthest away from the battle first. They're really easy to spot. Rome Resurgent. To think that this was the army of Gaius Tetricus. Look at what we just did to them. I mean, we did have some fairly... I mean, this, this legionary cavalry did have some losses dealt to it. But look what we just... I mean, we just completely made fools of them. This elephant unit that... Yeah, <laughs> I sent some elephants after these guys. That's hilarious. All 
Alright, so there's nothing more over here. Let's have these riders come this direction. I don't know that there's anyone left. I mean, there's there's these guys. Oh, I think that's Tetricus. We might not catch Tetricus. Is that? Hang on. I have to see. That may be the. That may be Tetricus himself running away from the battle. I wish I had seen that sooner. Because he's been running the whole time. And he is at the edge of the map. We're not going to be able to stop him. That's the advantage of having that mounted unit. Well, we can eliminate the rest of his forces here. What is, what is your deal? And why can I not... Oh, you're a Paul Marine Legionary. You're just... You're out of step with the rest of the group. Don't know how that happened to you, but... Alright, so let's go ahead and quit the battle. That's satisfactory to me. But I think Tetricus survived. Ran away like a coward. What an interesting turn of events that was. Nope. Didn't count. He still died. His entire army died. So, enslaved captives? Do we get an event of some kind? No, not seeing one. Now, could I move on Norea? I could move on Norea. And it's the capital of Raetia at Noricum, so that could be a potentially very lucrative move for me. Make haste. Okay. See, that's what I was afraid of. Let's put you back in ambush stance and see if they make the same mistake twice. Okay. That's annoying, but we'll make do. Alright, so this fleet has almost arrived in Brundisium. Now, this army should be able to move on. Nope. Not be able to move on Octodurus just yet. There's, they still have their movement points. That's right. I need to end the turn now, don't I? Alright, so we do have an army near Apollonia, but that's not something we need to be need to uh, concern ourselves with. Let's end the turn. Oh, yep, yeah, we have an extra edict. That's right. So it looks like Ethiopia is one of our provinces that could stand to have some additional taxes levied upon it. Let's also check the loyalty of political parts. We haven't done that in a while. Yeah, the Latin families have pretty low loyalty at the moment. We do have a slight risk of civil war. We have to have a lot more influence, though, in order to actually declare an empire. Right now, we are still a kingdom. We could improve our research rate significantly. We would lose a tax bonus. We would lose a recruitment bonus. We can't do anything right now. I might have some promotions to give to my troops that'll help with the influence piece next turn. Okay. Well, that went stupidly well. And Tetricus, I think, is dead. Did that army just leave Norea? What just happened? The Sassanids seem to be doing a little bit more thinking lately. I wonder why. They're realizing Palmyra is getting it together. Plague in Aratium. Zenobia Augusta. Nice. So, oh man. Stop the adoption. I really didn't need that, game. Stop doing that crap. That is so annoying. I need my money right now. That's... Ugh. All right. Iconium. 
rat infestation. Yeah, we need to get our... Oh, that's so annoying. We need to get our... Um... Where do we have plague? In Aratium. Yeah, there's, there's sanitation issues right now, but should be okay if we just upgrade some of our, our main sanitation buildings. And... I'm not sure what, what the deal is here. Could I still assign... It's saying that I still have room to assign an edict here. Or at least that's what it's making it look like. So Mauritania is going to be the next one that I need to check on. Income-wise, that's the one that I should be boosting. So let's do ta tax harvesting there. Okay, and now we're done with our edicts. Interesting. Yes, yeah, so we need to deal with sanitation issues, but it looks like they have moved out of Norea, which is hilarious to me. Why would you do that? Makes no sense whatsoever. I'm going to take the capital city of this province and kill an army there that was hanging out. Zenobia is chosen as a result of leveled up. Why? Let's, let's definitely make them a veteran army. And we want to convert this. Uh, we'll leave the Procurator's Villa there for now. And we need to go through and see what else we can do here. Should I go ahead and move on Coria? I think I should. Yep. Surprise! Alright, so this army might come and say hello, but we just leveled our general up so we can give him some additional abilities. We can make him a strategist. Which would make him instantly more powerful. Yeah, let's give him strategist, given that there's an army charging in. That'll help in an immediate battle. Now, where were we with this? We finished this, and now we have additional... That's right, we have an additional edict because we finished that research. That's why. So, in four turns, we'll have additional loyalty and additional taxes coming from everywhere, not just the provinces with edicts. That's handy. Let's convert you. All right, and we're going to go back to doing what we did before. I want to make sure that all of my... Yeah, see? Any mainline cities that are... Under level three. We were doing this in the last episode, and I'm just making sure that we are still doing well. And stuff like this, too, I need to look out for. Sanitation is actually okay in this district for the moment, but I want to make sure it stays that way. So let's get an aqueduct going, and then we could definitely use some food here so that, so that that trend continues. Let's do a pit mine since this is a mining city. Again, focusing on mainline buildings. Yep, Mediolanum. How long is that going to take? And actually, with that being done, are you growing again? Yes, you are growing again. That's what I wanted to see. Excellent. So we should finally start to see some improvements in our income now. Syracuse is expandable. We're not going to do that just yet, but it's going to be time very soon. Now let's have a look around and see. Oh, you know what? I can also train an additional patrician, but I can't right now. We'll have to wait. That spy's been hanging out there forever in a day. Alright, now, there is a slight risk to leaving Bertigala without a garrison. But I'm going to risk it all the same. We've started to move towards Gallia. And as a matter of fact, we are almost ready to hit it. Let's get you across the river. Let's have this spy just hanging out, keeping an eye on Bibracte. This army could actually just move on Bibracte right now. Or I could have him come back to Bertigala. Best thing to do may be just to have them in ambush stance. To prevent anyone coming into my territory this direction. 
Octodurus is... Uh, that's a potential area that could let an army in. I, I have a slight weak spot there. I'll have to keep an eye on that. The slightest of weak spots. Okay, so... Can you move on? Yes, you can! All right. Dario Ritum falls to the Legion of Malak Bell. And we have the Caledonians who are invading some territory up here. Now we're going to have to go to war with Caledonians and they control Britain. So that's... I actually, I think I probably took that settlement at a good time. If I want to delay my war with them a little bit. Let's do another veteran army. At your command. At your service. Ready for battle. Not necessarily the best promotion to be using for them right now. Ready for I know, but... Alright, so I officially have no more armies in Iberia. They've all moved into the Aquitaine area and beyond. And we can use this fleet to take Apollonia right now. Just kidding, no we can't. Why not? Because there's an army that for some stupid reason counts as reinforcing. Why? That doesn't... that doesn't add up to me. Alright, this army unfortunately has to heal for a bit before they're going to be useful to me. So this blockade we're just going to have to keep in place. For the time being. It's fine. It's fine, everything will be okay. How may I serve you? Yeah, we've got that spy just posted up, keeping an eye on things. I, I don't think that fleet's going to move on Thessalonica. They were thinking about it, though. I fight for the people. Now, Zenobia's force... I might want to move her down to Apollonia Pontica. Because I do feel like this navy is going to try something. I don't know what it is, but they're going to try something. It is an honor to serve Rome, Commander. Let's end the turn and see what dumb moves these guys make. Okay, I think, yeah, that army is taking advantage of the opening I gave them. Which is actually pretty smart. Because they're going to be able to hit Mediolanum. If I was interpreting where they were geographically right there, I think that's what they're doing. Plague in, Naes in uh, Naesus, we had our spy return to duty. High chance of secession and civil war in Palmyra. Silver Tongue, our envoys have discovered a woman in a foreign village who seems to be blessed with the power of persuasion. We could hire her to assist in future negotiations with foreign nations. What say you? So let's go ahead and hire her, and we'll have a female character as a result. Those are a recent addition to the game. You can have female leaders, politicians, just influential, basically, um, women. Cool stuff. All right, so let's take a look really quickly at where we can secure promotions, because we haven't done this for a while, and this can help us get some additional loyalty. Babalathus is now at his maximum rank. Yep, I can promote you too. I forget, we also have the, the second Vabalathus, weirdly enough. Let's give her extra authority. And then secure promotion. Okay, so now we're only at 1% civil war chance because of our increased influence. We have this party. We don't have enough money. Really? We used all of our money just now. All right. Well, that's annoying. For those promotions, we used all of it. I guess the promotion for Vabalathus was pretty expensive, and we're not making that much money, so it actually makes sense. All right. Yeah, he is moving straight down into this territory, which is real cute. Real, real cute. It's going to be interesting to see. So if he's going to try and move through the woods here, we can intercept with Vabalathus. Yeah, 
Yeah, if I have him in rapid march mode, tell you what, we're going to have Abalathus go this way. Make haste, men. As far as he can. Advance. To take Arctodurus, but also be in position to stop them, because they're not going to be able to move fast enough to do what they need to do. And we'll have this army come in and take Bibroctae right now. We're just going to take the capital away from Tetricus. There's no army defending it. We're not going to fight this on the battle map. We fought so many battles similar to it. I, don't, I just don't think there's any reason to. Interesting. The German Confederation now controls Yuliobana, which is good, because I really didn't want to have to go to war with the Caledonians. So that's a win. We have a Gallic-Roman force up here. I'm going to keep the Legion of Malak Bell in place for that reason. And we need to stop this episode here, but let me have a look around and see if there's anything else I can do with the forces that I have in place. Athens has a pretty decent force defending it. Is that the capital of the... No. Of the Marcomanni? It's not, but... These guys are still healing up, so they won't be useful to me for a little bit longer. What I could do is go ahead and start training, as I've been saying. We have this thing now. Ooh, I could go ahead and give this order. Let's raise forces first. Is anyone else available? Ooh, we can put Pontia in charge of a... I didn't know that. We can put her in charge of an army. But we're going to have uh, Vabalathus' twin lead an army. Give him some cataphracts. He's going to be in Cyrene. And I don't think we're going to do any recruiting with his army yet. But I did want to go ahead and have that done. It'd be cool to have that female character leading the army. I actually, I kind of like that idea. Alexandria's a recruitment center too. You know what? Yeah. We're going to raise two new armies. We can't afford them at the moment, but we have lots of upgrades happening that will make that more conceivable. And let's give her... Let's give her some Imperial Cataphracts too. I've, I've, I rather enjoy having, you know, the horseman general types. So Pontia is going to be a general for us, too. I didn't know that was possible. That's really cool. Okay, we'll stop this episode here. In the next one, we are very likely to go ahead and take complete control of this territory and get some gold for it as a result. Uh, Tetricus is dead. <laughs> so, I mean, let's take a quick look at Gallic Rome. Now, it's still showing that it's led by Tetricus, so I don't know what's going on there, but we're about to finish him off. We've, of course, finished off Aurelian's Rome after they tried to come back. So we are really, really close to uh, wrapping up the Civil War. And then it's just a matter of turning on the uh, Sassanids and saying, hey, we're the Romans now. It's time to uh, it's time to bring it. So that's going to happen in the next episode or two, I would imagine. Well, no, the, Paul, the, the war against the Sassanids is going to take a little bit longer but um, to get to that. But we'll be there before long. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes are coming out every day at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I will see you next time.